Alrighty. So, it is time to start loading up the pit fire kiln. So I've got all my supplies laid out for me. So right here, I've got all my combustible materials. I've got charcoal, wood chips, shredded paper, split kindling, and in that garbage bag is some very fine sawdust. Then right here is the fancy schmancy kiln. It may look like a garbage can because it actually is. It is just a normal metal steel garbage can. At the bottom I've got some holes drilled in it and up to about one third I've got it filled with pea gravel. And so what that's going to do is allow just a little bit of air to get into the kiln from the bottom and help it more, uh, help it keep its heat a little bit more evenly. And right over here, we've got all the pots that are going to be going in. Hopefully these will all fit in one firing, but we shall see. Alright, first step is I'm going to lay a whole bunch of these wood chips at the bottom. The reason I start with wood chips is because they're kind of damp at the moment, and so it'll help kind of slow the fire down once it burns all the way to the bottom, and it's a cheap filler. Okay, next thing that's going in is the sawdust here. And I want to build up a layer that's about maybe an inch or so. I don't want a ton, because this is mainly just used to help the fire smolder, make it nice and slow. And the more sawdust I add, the darker the coloration that's going to be on the pots. All right, now it is time to start loading up a layer of pots. And so how I'm gonna stack this kiln is something called tumble stacking. What that means is that I'm going to more or less haphazardly just pile these things on top of one another. Because there's no glaze on any of these, it doesn't matter if the pots are touching each other. Then, the most unusual part is a little bit of table salt. And what this will do is it tends to add little speckles. And sometimes if the kiln even gets hot enough, it'll add a bunch of like kind of yellows and reds to it. So, fingers crossed. Alright, we were successful. I got everybody's pots from all those three boxes all piled in here. Now it's time to kind of cover them up with some of this uh, paper and sawdust and then build a little mini campfire on top of it. Okay, everybody is nice and covered up. Now it's time to put some charcoal on it. And now I'm gonna lay just a thin bed of charcoal on top of here. And what it's gonna do is that as the top fire fizzles out, I want the embers to kind of slowly burn down through the length of the kiln. And those charcoal bits just like the kind of stuff you put in your barbecue, do a great job of doing that. Alrighty, the kiln is all loaded up. I've got all the, all the stuff for the fire. But before I start the fire, I made sure to remove all of my bags of combustible material. I moved them over there. And then I've also got a big fat bucket of water right next to me in case something goes wrong. And as well, I've got easy access to a fire extinguisher. And then this will probably be an active burn, so the actual like flames burning for about hmm, anywhere between an hour, maybe two and a half hours. And then hopefully it'll start a nice big fat bed of embers that'll carry down through the length of the kiln, whereas that extended burn will probably take anywhere from probably five hours to sometimes even 10 hours. So it's good to start one of these things early in the weekend rather than in the afternoon on a Sunday. All right, I will check back once the active burn is done. All right, it's been about an hour or so, so the 
big flashy flames have all died down. It's a nice bed of embers. I threw on the last of that bag of charcoal. You can already start to see some of these pots peeking through. Already getting some good smoky colors on them. But then about now, I'm gonna put the lid on to the garbage can about just a hair. What this is gonna do is it's gonna start wanting to consume the oxygen and the combustible materials that are all down in the belly of this garbage can. I'm gonna leave this for about an hour or so. And then before I go to sleep tonight, I am going to secure the lid on top, maybe put a couple bricks on there, and then let it burn for anywhere from eight to 10 hours. And we'll probably pick back up on this in a couple days once it's cooled down and all the embers have gone. All right, see you then. Alrighty, so all of the pots have been taken out of the kiln. And now the last step is to just rinse them off in a bucket. Get all of the remaining ash off of them. And let them dry out. Then after they're all dry, I'm going to apply uh, some surface uh, sealant to them. Essentially it's a finishing wax. This is what a lot of potters use to really bring out the shine and the burnish. And so the better you burnish, the shinier it gets.